that God give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts so we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth, make us hungry for this heavenly food that it may nourish us today in the way of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Oh, hear the word of God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading comes to us from Mark chapter 6. Verses 30 through 34. Listen again for God's word. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they, they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Sisters and brothers, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm grateful for our kids going to camp. They get to go away to a deserted place, and I don't know that they rest, but they definitely have fun for a week as they learn more about our, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. Uh, camp Sawtooth is located in... Uh, the middle of the Sawtooth National Forest, maybe 10 miles north of Ketchum. And it's a wonderful time. I'm excited to be with them. Uh, I don't even know that I get to go and really have fun. Uh, I get to do that, but I also get to speak in the morning and in the evening and at staff devotions three times a day, um, but it will be good, right? How many of you have ever been to church camp before? Raise your hands. Excellent, awesome. You know the awesomeness we're talking about today. How many of you have ever just been camping before? Yeah, I expect to see more hands. Terrific, good stuff. So you know a little bit about uh, what I'm gonna be talking about today. Back in the time BC, in the land of the Star Church, before children, Chrissy and I love to go backpack camping. And I have a backpack over here. And on your back, you carry all of your supplies that you need for the time that you're going to be away. One of my favorite memories is walking, hiking over the Continental Divide in Rocky Mountain National Park. A beautiful time to go away to a desolate place. Uh, and backpacking is rest for the soul, but it is not necessarily rest for your body. In this pack, you, you carry with you all that you need. So let's find out what we have in here. Water. That's really important, right? Water can be a little bit carry. Here on the bottom, which is not necessarily where I normally put it, but for the sake of preaching today, we have a tent. You carry around this thing, it's a backpacking tent, but still weighs about eight pounds or so. Uh, 
you need this to protect you from the elements when you sleep at night and away from the mosquitoes when they come as well. You would also carry, what do we have down here? You need your sleeping bag. This stuffs down a lot more, but when you're backpacking, you need a place to sleep and to stay warm. You carry around a first aid kit that I don't have in here per se, for your own health, for the health of others. But as you're backpacking, carrying around lots of stuff, but some of the things that you carry around are not necessarily tangible items that weigh down your back, but some things that weigh down your mind and your spirit. This abstract element that you carry around when you're backpacking is uh, this concept of anxiety. What are we going to encounter along the way? Will the weather be good for us? What will our destination be like for us? Some anxiety about the future. Carry that when you're backpacking. Sometimes we carry around this abstract notion of fear that weighs upon you. You heard the reports about bear sightings. Have you placed your food in a strategic enough place where it's far from you? Or if a bear does come around, you know, you carry around some anxiety, you carry around some fear. Carrying around the stress of planning the event, right? Have we thought through all the possibilities and scenarios that you'll encounter on the trail? And you also carry around this notion of hope, knowing that the destination is going to be wonderful, but also realizing that much of backpacking, while it is about going to your destination, is really about the journey and the hope that we find therein. Carry around a lot of stuff when we go on the journey of backpacking. Carry around a lot of stuff on this journey of life, right? <coughs> Abstractly, you know, all of us, we have this fundamental need for shelter in our lives, so we work somehow to ensure that there's a roof over our head, and there's heat, or in this season, air conditioning in our homes. We make sure that we have food on the table to feed ourselves, to feed our family, a place to sleep, caring for one another. But in the reality of life, we also carry around these emotional, spiritual stones of anxiety, anxious about our future and our relationships, fear about what the future may bring to us the stress of just everyday living, the stress of living with other people and interacting with them, right? And our hopes that are often our own. We carry around these stones. And often, as we journey through life, this backpack of living can become heavy and overwhelming. When Jesus tells his disciples, uh, to come away and rest for a little while in Mark chapter 6. The disciples had just come back from a journey that they were busy telling Jesus about. Uh, it's incredible. They were on a journey, but Jesus says not to take a lot of stuff. You begin in verse 7. Uh, Jesus says, He called the twelve and he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. All they're carrying around them with them is a staff, depending upon the hospitality of those whom they encountered. So Mark says, so they went out and proclaim that all should repent, all should return to God, and that they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. So it was on this missionary journey of teaching and healing that the disciples went out with none of this stuff, just the staff, 
and they worked really hard. And we pick up in, in 31, they had come back and Jesus, recognizing that while they didn't have this physical stuff, they were probably still carrying around the weight of fear and anxiety and just the work of casting out demons and healing people and teaching them. And Jesus, recognizing that all of humanity needs rest, he says to his disciples, come away with me to a deserted place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and in the midst of their ministry, they didn't even have a lot of time to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. The Lord of the universe recognizes that his people, for their spiritual well-being, need rest. So your pastor's looking at you today. Asking you the question, when is the last time that you've encountered any rest with the Lord your God? Ron did a terrific job of reading to us the commandment uh, from the book of Exodus. The commandment, not a suggestion, a commandment to observe the Lord's day and rest. Because the Lord recognizes that even as the God of the universe needs time to rest from the dailiness of our tasks, we too need to rest and reconnect. Now bear in mind that when the disciples went away to rest, they were going with Jesus. You see, rest in the Christian tradition is not just a time of mental relaxation, which is good in and of itself, right? But our rest is our opportunity to lay down the burdens of our work and to reconnect to Jesus, to the Spirit of God, which enlivens <coughs> us. Now, I'm privileged to know many of you and know that we are a congregation who likes to work hard, who loves to get things done. We are a congregation of workers. Check off the to-do list, make sure we do the best job, and I want to ask all of you good middle-class white folks in the midst of your busy schedules and your hard work, when's the last time you took the opportunity to rest? This rest is essential to our spiritual lives. If the creator of the universe, our Lord Jesus Christ, needs opportunity to go away and rest, what makes you think that you don't? Sometimes us Christians are really good at saying, I recognize the need for rest, but there's just this one more thing that I have to do. And as we think about the importance of rest, like that's a very real observation in life, right? It's difficult to schedule Sabbath at 7.30 every morning. Sometimes it's difficult to schedule Sabbath at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings or to take that time away in our vacation schedule. This is recognized in the Bible because as the disciples were going away with Jesus to rest, guess what happens? Continuing on in the scripture, now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. They had heard of the good gospel work that the disciples were doing in the region, and they were hungry for healing. They were hungry for teaching. And as Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shadow, and he began to teach them many things. And as we look around the culture in which we live, it is easy to see that our culture often resembles this notion of lots of sheep running around like they're without a shepherd. Boise, Idaho, the states, the world, needs to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and even as it is important for us to rest simultaneously, 
we must recognize the work that often lies in front of us and discern through the Spirit of Jesus what is it that we are called to do. Are we called to ignore the crowd in front of us? Or do we and go away with Jesus right now? Or do we share the gospel and do the work? This is why rest is so important. Because this discernment is essential. Jesus recognized that those sheep gathering around him without a shepherd needed some teaching. And the disciples in this passage are dog-tired. And Jesus, in the verses uh, after this, he says, we need to feed these folks. They're here. They need some teaching. I know we need some rest, but they need it. And the disciples, tired, say, how are we going to feed them? And in the midst of discerning what God is calling us to do, Jesus performs one of his greatest miracles, feeding of the 5,000. When we're making our journey through life and we recognize that God can do what we are not able to do, miracles can happen. So in this concept of rest, it's not always like super simple in how we do it, right? But it is important that we know the concept and practice the concept for these reasons. Rest is a commandment. When we think that our work in and of itself will save me or my family or my church, and it's only up to me, we, we run very close to committing idolatry of ourselves. Friends, it's not up to us. It's up to God, God fed those 5,000 on the lake shore that day. Rest is a commandment, it's not a suggestion. When we rest, we reconnect with God. And in this reconnection is where we find this word religion. In the Latin, re, again, ligio, does that sound familiar? Like a, a ligament, which is a connection? Religio, religion. What we do here is all about connecting us to the Lord our God. And if your religion isn't connecting you, it's probably not a religion at all. What we do as a faith is about connection. And when we rest from our labors, when we put down all this stuff and simply be with Jesus, we find that reconnection. The God, with our God. And finally, when we're able to reconnect, it nurtures our souls so that we can once again pick up this bag and put in our house and our bed and our meals and all the emotional stuff that we carry around. We can pick it up, renewed with the incredible hope that we have in Jesus, to carry on. So if your backpack of life is feeling heavy these days, Remember these words of Jesus. In Mark, he says, come away and rest a while. And in Matthew, he says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Thanks be to God, who loves us so much that he allows us to rest. Amen and amen. Come to our time and our service.